What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. I guess Yemen used to be like a series of little kingdoms that came together into a country in maybe the 90s, something like that. But essentially, the way I understand it is you have this group, the Houthis, which is, you know, some sort of interpretation religious based who are backed by Iran and are trying to take control of the rest of the now combined country. And Saudi Arabia, who is who shares a border and has had problems with them, is like, no, no, no. Yeah. And they're having this proxy war that then the U.S. is somehow involved in sending in, you know, a few bombs, you know. Yep. Got to gotta support the military industrial complex. But like, what's, what's happening? So yeah. Let's start from the beginning. Let's actually get an educated take on it, unlike mine. <laughs> so in this a great rat de- rat's nest to get involved in, which yeah. needed, needed another little shithole. I'm sorry, <laughs> not, not to disparage <laughs> Yemen, but I'm just, just in terms of its situation right That's now. That's what it's, Dale it's said pretty, too, pretty so it's cool. And uh, I've been there, so I, it's... It's it's fascinating. It's a really wild place. I mean, there's it's it, the interior of the country is just amazing mountains and 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 you know high desert and beautiful in a very stark way. And in the cities on the coast, particularly Sana, it's uh, in the inner city is just tiny medieval winding streets, but but not like you know medieval Europe. It's something I that's like right. st- Stone Age you know, winding streets. Just really. St- uh, a really unusual place, but it's got this crazy complicated history. There's actually a part of it that used to be a, a separate communist country that the, the Chinese and the Russians supported, and that it's had civil wars and other countries like the Egyptians have been involved in some of their fighting. So it's 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 just been this crazy mess for a long time, and out of this mess emerges this group called the Houthis, and the Houthis are, I mean, you almost have to think of them as being cult like. They have their own little religion, which is. Kind of Shia, but kind of their own weird little thing. There's a, a ruling family, the Houthi family, which which uh, kind of leads this cult. Mm. They're um, they've decided they really like the Iranians because the Iranians uh, they they see themselves as the Hezbollah of the South. That they essentially allied with with Iran and its interest and 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 the fight against the two big Satans in the world, which is Israel and the United States, which they absolutely hate. And they're just committed to destroying, even though they have no way of doing that. <laughs> um, they, they have this, their, their big chant, whenever they have crowds together, to, you know, they have to chant something. And so it's like death to Israel, death to the United States, and, and um, destruction to Jews everywhere or something. I'm, I'm getting it all wrong, but it's, those, that's the essential message. They've hated us with a passion since the Iraq invasion. That's the thing that really set them mm. off. And so they they really do view the Americans as kind of the center of evil in the world. Didn't they have a leader though at the t- not the Houthis but the country had a leader at the time that played like both sides against the middle? Yeah, right? yeah. And there was uh, they had their own Arab Spring moment too. And there was the 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 leader. I actually had met him in uh, I think twenty twelve. Went over there. I was covering the State Department and went with the delegation. What was um, his name? Oh, you're gonna you're gonna stump me on that now. Oh, but boy. he was um, he ended up getting sick and and died. Um, but uh, he was beginning to have to deal with this this issue at the time of the Houthis kind of taking parts of the country and becoming a threat to the region. Because as we've mentioned, they, they don't like the Saudis, the Saudis don't like them. So a war broke out in which Saudis and the UAE together tried to fight the Houthis and ended up not really succeeding and, and, and sort of backing out of it. Um, the Americans supported the Saudis and the, the, the Emiratis with weapons and, and money. Uh, mostly with weapons, selling them weapon systems. Guys, if you'd like to join our Patreon by hitting the link in the description below, not only does it support our show and allow us to get great guests like this and put out more content, but you're going to get exclusive access to the Julian and Alessi show, which is the show we post only on Patreon that's with my producer, Alessi Aleman and I, as well as some behind-the-scenes content and some extra content with guests. So hit that link in the description below, and I hope to see you over there. But it, the Saudis now look at it as, as just a disaster. They don't want anything to do with fighting the Houthis anymore, even mm. though they're vastly bigger and 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 one of the wealthiest countries in in in, in the world. They they don't want to fight the Houthis because you just can't really fight them. As a friend was describing to me, he's like, you can't bomb these guys back to the Stone Ages because they're already in the Stone <laughs> Ages. So there's there's really almost no leverage against them. Mm. Uh, they they see an opportunity after the after the Gaza crisis. Uh, to fight the, their big enemies, Israel and America, and so they 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 they're just mostly sim- well, it's going to say mostly symbolically because they obviously can't do a lot of damage to us or to 
to to the Israelis, but they can they can shut down shipping because they happen to be right there mm. in this little crossroads of the world where where much of the oil tanker traffic goes. Oh, was there a Alessia? Can you go to YouTube real quick? I think there was a video recently from the Wall Street Journal. Type in Wall Street Dur- Journal most dangerous shipping port in the world. Just the thumbnail itself. I, this is this is on my watch later. I'm pretty sure it should have like maybe six hundred forty eight, six hundred forty nine thousand views. Somewhere in there. Do you see it? Yes. That one. Yeah. 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 Wall Street Journal explains. So we can't play it because it's Wall Street Journal. That little uh, straight there. This uh, right now is one of the most dangerous places to, to, to for shipping traffic in the world. The Gate of Tears? Yeah. And uh, it's because the Houthis are there on, on that sort of east coast, but they've they've got, because of their friendship with the, the Iranians, a remarkable array of weapons. And this is a country that you know, one of the poorest countries in the region, if not the world. So it doesn't, they don't have a lot, you know, people are poor, but the Iranians have given them some pretty impressive weapon systems. So they've got something like six kinds of anti-ship missiles, some some cruise missiles, all kinds of drones. Uh, A lot of these are Iranian either gifts from the Iranians or the Iranians have, have showed them how to make them, essentially help them create their own factories to make them. So they have a pretty robust armament industry. All of it, you know, aimed at being able to sort of take out boats um, and other things that they see as, as threats to them. Just today, and this is, we're doing this on the 22nd of March, they they launched a missile at uh, at Israel that actually apparently struck Israel, Israeli territory, and it didn't hit anything. It apparently landed in a desert area, and it'd be typical of the, of the Israelis. They're watching it come in. They see it's just going to land harmlessly. Why do you Waste a, a patriot or, or or an Arab, you know, or an arrow anti um, anti ballistic missile system, to, you know, by trying to take it down if it's just going to be landing harmlessly. But as far as I know, that's the first time that one of their missiles have actually hit Israeli territory. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.